In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, a continuation of the reading from the Mystical City of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Words of Jesus Christ. Book 6, Chapter 22, beginning at 669. Eternal Father and my Lord God, to the incomprehensible majesty of thy infinite goodness and justice, I offer my entire humanity and all that, according to thy will, it has accomplished in descending from thy bosom to assume passable and mortal flesh for the redemption of men, my brethren. I offer thee, Lord, with myself also my most loving mother, her love, her most perfect works, her sorrows, her sufferings, her anxious and prudent solicitude in serving me, imitating me and accompanying me unto death. I offer thee the little flock of my apostles, the holy church and congregation of the faithful, such as it is now and as it shall be to the end of the world. And with it I offer to thee all the mortal children of Adam. All this I place in thy hands as the true and almighty Lord and God. As far as my wishes are concerned, I suffer and die for all. And I desire that all shall be saved, under the condition that all follow me, and profit of my redemption. Thus may they pass from the slavery of the devil to be thy children, my brethren and co-heirs of the grace merited by me. Especially, O my Lord, do I offer to thee the poor, the despised and afflicted, who are my friends and who follow me on the way to the cross. I desire that the just and the predestined be written in thy eternal memory. I beseech thee, my Father, to withhold thy chastisement and not to raise the scourge of thy justice over men. Let them not be punished as they merit for their sins. Be thou from now on their father as thou art mine. I beseech thee also that they may be helped to ponder upon my death in pious affection and be enlightened from above. And I pray for those who are persecuting me, in order that they may be converted to the truth. Above all do I ask thee for the exaltation of thy ineffable and most holy name. 670. This prayer and supplication of our Savior Jesus were known to the Most Blessed Mother, and she imitated him and made the same petitions to the Eternal Father in so far as she was concerned. The most prudent virgin never forgot or disregarded the first word which she had heard from the mouth of her divine Son as an infant. Become like unto me, my beloved. His promise that in return for the new human existence which she had given him in her virginal womb, he would by his almighty power give her a new existence of divine and eminent grace above all other creatures, was continually fulfilled. To this favor was due also her deep science and enlightenment concerning all the operations of the sacred humanity of her Son, none of which ever escaped her knowledge and attention. Whatever she thus perceived, she imitated, so that she was always anxious to study and penetrate them with deep understanding to put them promptly into action and to practice them courageously and zealously during all her life. In this neither sorrow could disturb her, nor anguish hinder her, nor persecution detain her, nor the bitterness of her suffering weaken her. If the great queen had assisted at the passion with the same sentiments as the rest of the just, it would indeed have been admirable, but not so admirable as the way in which she suffered. She was singular and extraordinary in all her sufferings. For, as I have said above, she felt in her own virginal body all the torments of Christ our Lord, both interior and exterior. On account of this conformity, we can say that also the Heavenly Mother was scourged, crowned, spit upon, buffeted, laden with the cross and nailed upon it. For she felt these pains and all the rest in her purest body. Although she felt them in a different manner, yet she felt them with such conformity that the mother was altogether a faithful likeness of her son. 
besides the greatness of her dignity, which in most holy Mary must, on this account, have corresponded in the highest possible degree with that of Christ, there was concealed therein another mystery. This was that the desire of Christ to see his exalted love and benignity as exhibited in his passion copied in all its magnitude in a mere creature was fulfilled in her and no one possessed a greater right to this favor than his own mother. 671 In order to find the places for the auger holes on the cross, the executioners haughtily commanded the creator of the universe, O oh, dreadful temerity, to stretch himself out upon it. The teacher of humility obeyed and without hesitation, but they, following their inhuman instinct of cruelty, marked the places for the holes, not according to the size of his body, but larger, having to mind a new torture for their victim. This inhuman intent was known as the mother of light, and the knowledge of it was one of the greatest afflictions of her chastest heart during the whole passion. She saw through the intentions of these ministers of sin, and she anticipated the torments to be endured by her beloved son when his limbs could be wrenched from their sockets in being nailed to the cross. But she could not do anything to prevent it, as it was the will of the Lord to suffer these pains for men. When he rose from the cross, and they sat about boring the holes, the great lady approached and took hold of one of his hands adoring him and kissing it with greatest reverence. The executioners allowed this because they thought that the sight of his mother would cause so much the greater affliction to the Lord, for they wished to spare him no sorrow they could cause him. But they were ignorant of the hidden mysteries, for the Lord during his passion had no greater source of consolation and interior joy than to see in the soul of his most blessed mother the beautiful likeness of himself and the full fruits of his passion and death. This joy, to a certain extent, comforted Christ our Lord also in that hour. 672 Having bored the three holes into the cross, the executioners again commanded Christ the Lord to stretch himself out upon it in order to be nailed to it. The supreme and almighty king, as the author of patience, obeyed, and at the will of the hangman, placed himself with outstretched arms upon the blessed wood. The Lord was so weakened, disfigured, and exhausted, that if the ferocious cruelty of those men had left the least room for natural reasons and kindness, they could not have brought themselves to inflict further torments upon the innocent and meek lamb, humbly suffering such nameless sorrows and pains. But not so with them, for the judges and their executioners, O oh, terrible and most hidden judgments of the Lord, were transformed in their malice and deathly hatred into demons, void of the feelings of sensible and earthly men, and urged on only by diabolical wrath and fury. Presently one of the executioners seized the hand of Jesus our Savior and placed it upon the auger hole, while another hammered a large and rough nail through the palm. The veins and sinews were torn, and the bones of the sacred hand which made the heavens and all that exists were forced apart. When they stretched out the other hand, they found that it did not reach up to the auger hole, for the sinews of the other arm had been shortened and the executioners had maliciously set the holes too far apart, as I have mentioned above. In order to overcome the difficulty, they took the chain with which the Savior had been bound in the garden and looping one end through a ring around his wrist, they, with unheard of cruelty, pulled the hand over the hole and fastened it with another nail. Thereupon they seized his feet and placing them one above the other, they tied the same chain around both 
and stretched them with barbarous ferocity toward the third hole. Then they drove through both feet a large nail into the cross. Thus the sacred body, in which dwelled the divinity, was nailed motionless to the holy cross, and the handiwork of his deified members, formed by the Holy Ghost, was so stretched and torn asunder that the bones of his body, dislocated and forced from their natural position, could all be counted. The bones of his breast, of his shoulders and arms, and of his whole body yielded to the cruel violence and were torn from their sinews.